I would say a tornado definitely touched down here. All these trees knocked down. Incredible. Monthly shout out to our friends at Cabela's and Bass Pro for sponsoring our channel. Um, towards the end of this video, I'm going to talk about a little bit about our uh, city girl and I went to uh, the Bass Pro near Toronto and a uh, wonderful experience. Uh, great company anyway, but we're going to talk about that later. For now, this turned out to be the tornado video. Um, it didn't sort of start that way, but that's what it is. Um, I got lots of footage of uh, the down trees along the, the roadsides. And then I went back. I went back uh, the next day and got lots of uh, drone footage. Um, just just amazing to see from the air as well. So stick around for all that. As I said, it starts out pretty simply. It was not meant to be a the tornado video, but that's what it turned out to be. So here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to Raspberry Rock. I'm Russell. It's a nice day now, it's Monday. Um, last night though, we had a thunderstorm rip through here and I really do mean rip through here. Uh, very high winds, a ton of rain. Um, it's funny because my, my downspout must have been clogged up here because the water was coming right over the eaves and the wind was blowing it like this way. <laughs> There's just like a shower of rain coming in here. It was it was pretty crazy. Um, I've since discovered that uh, the whole Marmara, Madoc, Tweed area got hit, hit really bad. Same as a couple of months ago during that Dureco that, that roamed through here. So I saw a little bit of video, um, Highway 7 was closed down last night because of trees down on the road, lots of trees down on the road, Highway 37 was closed down, um, pretty crazy, crazy stuff. So what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to uh, head out in the trail with my, uh, with my, get my chainsaw ready and head out in the trail and see if I can clear it up, and I'm sure more trees are down. Um, and hopefully... I've noticed that the apples are gone from my mineral block across the pond here, so I want to get out there and check the trail cam and put some more apples out for that as well. Uh, yeah, so let's get going. This box, one of the best things I've done. Still needs handles though.
I swear it takes forever to get ready to do stuff. this. Just made it worse. Uh, I'm gonna have to put some tape on there or something. Shit. Three different people have checked on me. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, we're doing okay. I think I'm gonna put some tuck tape on this. There must be a more permanent solution for that, but for right now I got work to do. I don't want to make it any worse than I just did. You know what caused this hole in the first place? The little doodads on the front of my uh, mosquito uh, jackets. Yeah, they, uh, they hang down there and they get right in underneath my crotch because that's just where it hangs. And it sits there and rubs back and forth. That's quite the visual, isn't it? <laughs> you didn't want to think about that so early in the morning. Tape never heard anything. You know, I usually have a little thing. I'm going to show you something. Tips and tricks with Russell. Hold on. These little things come on the top of coffee bags. They're really thick. Z uh, twist ties. So I'm just going to stick it there and then cut it. Works better with a. Uh... <clears throat> Take it off, do it again. There's better ways to do this than the way I'm doing it right now, but it's much faster that way anyway. Ta-da! Well, the deer flies are out. I doused my uh, hands and wrists and bug spray. Heavy on the deep, 30% deep, so I don't want to be bitten like crazy again. Anyway, it's gorgeous out here. <laughs> it's really nice to be, time to be out in the bush. I mean, if it wasn't for the bugs. Anyway, so far so good. I haven't gone like very far from the cabin. This kind of stuff you gotta clean up. Little stuff you can just run over. This is this is not new. This is this all happened when the Derrico came through a couple months ago, and I haven't I haven't tried to fix it up because there's a lot of challenges in doing it. Um, I've been driving around it this way, which has been fine. But I think what I'll do since I got the chainsaw here is I'm just going to clear out some of the difficult trees. Like I've hit a couple of these, and I just kind of run them over. These small ones I just run over. I'm just gonna clear them up, clear up a, maybe a couple more trees that are kind of right in the way, like this one right here. But yeah, that big pile. I think I want to have somebody else with me when I kind of tackle that because it's pretty dangerous. Those trees hung up like that. And a few few people have told me, uh, just attach your winch to it and pull, and you'll be fine. And not that easy. Those trees are huge, and I don't think I could pull them with my winch. Um, I could do some of uh, like this this tree I could you know chop up but anyway I want to have some somebody with me when I tackle that bunch for right now this 
This area right through here is working fine, but as I said, I'm gonna clean it up. That one actually uh, isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it's pretty good in here. Oh, I'll probably just leave it. So uh, I went right out to the road, right out to my car. Not not too bad. There was some s little stuff that I uh, took care of that I didn't film. Um, but not nearly as bad as when that Derrico came through a couple of months ago. Right now I'm heading out to uh, Dan's property. A portion of the trail we share together. We're not on it right now, but and he's cleared that up a number of times when he's just got there before I did. So I thought I'd come out here and just look at his trail and maybe clear up some stuff. And here we are. We didn't get very far. There's a big poplar down there. Uh, interestingly, though, this is the same spot. I don't know if you guys remember, but last year I talked about a beaver pond that had been completely drained. Well, this is the same spot here. And I haven't been here in a while. Jesus, it's really soft through here. I haven't been here in a while, so I, uh, I don't know what's going on. It certainly hasn't filled in. I mean, you can see grass all the way across there. But I, there's lots of wet areas too. Of course, rain like crazy yesterday. A lot of water came down. Yeah, two or three inches, maybe more. You know, like I'm thinking 25, 40 cent centimeters kind of thing. 
Is that right? No, no, it would be millimeters. Oh, look at the deer flies. Come on, man. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna run out to Dan's cabin and just check on it and clear out any trees I see. He keeps his, his trail in really good shape. So uh I don't know I don't know if that's gonna, gonna Jesus it's wet through here. I don't know if that's gonna mean uh, there's less trees to him because he keeps his trail in really good shape. That'd be weird. Weird thing to say, wouldn't it? That'll be the last one, right? I'm sure that'll be that'll be the last one. All these poplars. <laughs> This will be the last one, right? This will be the last one. I'm not gonna film this, guys. Unless something interesting happens, and I'm just gonna keep going. So Dan had texted me to see if I was okay, and then uh, here they are. <laughs> Checking. Out. They came just to check out the trail and check out the cabin. So I'm following them in now. Dan's giving us a lesson here. Might as well listen. Go ahead. This is silver maple. It's, it's considered a hardwood. Yep. Used in pallets and dunnage and furniture. But you see this big core? Yep. This big red core, or big brown core in the middle? If this was soft maple, this would be whiter and there'd be just a little red core in the middle. Right. That's how you tell the difference. So, so which one is this? This is this hard. Is silver maple, or what they call hard maple. Silver or hard maple. I think that's mostly what we have around that's here, right? You wanna, that's what you want to burn. Uh, no, there's red maple here in the lowland, where it's swampy and wet. You'll get red maple. Yeah. Up on the higher, it's it's silver maple, or hard maple. But okay. It's not sugar maple. Uh, hmm. But this is this is the burnable stuff. You can burn soft maple too. Yeah. But anyway. That's how you can tell, because it's difficult to tell between the two. Right. Okay. Now I know. There you go. Now we all know. Lesson for today. One of many. On a day like today, I can be down to one bar. And by 1 30 in the afternoon I'm full. Nice. So I'm I'm just I'm not gonna really take anything more out right now. Ah oh, Jesus, did we leave the cables like that? It's a mess. Huh? Yeah. Mess, you left a mess. Huh. So you took out some trees. Oh okay, I see. Uh -huh. Yeah. This one I down here. here. Right here? Here? Uh still got a couple more. Seven or eight. Oh uh, that... you know what? Once it gets over that pine, yeah. uh it's you got Right through here, you got quite a few hours. I'm wondering whether to just turn it a little bit. But as I mm. said, I'm getting like 400 watts uh, steady. And, uh, it brings That's a good it question. Right up. So, yeah, uh, if, if your clear sky is over here, but 
if if you're not having any problems like in the spring fall sorry spring summer fall but then fall and, and winter and, and spring these these trees are bare so you get more it's the pine but well yeah sure i want to take if i took that pine over there down it would really open it up yeah i was going to say i would wait till the winter time and then see what's what's uh, in your way yeah but I, i've taken a lot out of here and it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like you've... No. Like... No, yeah. If I wanted a garden, I mean, I could put a garden out here. Hmm? Yeah. There's enough. And if I ever have time to tend it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I have t time to tend mine, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good. How you doing, Rick? Not bad. a little tootle on my ATV I uh, found this area I would say a tornado definitely touched down here all these trees knocked down I would guess that uh, that helicopter is probably following the tornado path I guess. See, there's devastation on that side of the road as well. Bell Canada doing their thing. Oh my God, is that Mary Kay? It's crazy. I know. Wow. How is it up uh, up north where you guys are? Queensboro's fine. Um, yeah. Marmor got hit bad. Uh, barns roofs are gone. Trailer yeah. parks are damaged. Oh, it's always the trailer parks. Yeah. I'm assuming. I don't know if they're following the tornado path, maybe. Yeah. 
Are you heading down there? Well, I was going down to Swede, so... I'm guessing these lines aren't, uh... No, that's not Bell. Look at this. Incredible. It's just a mess. Like it came through here and took down every single tree. doggies. Oh, did I just poke you in the eye? You okay? Sometimes sometimes I uh, dream about being in a tornado, like or seeing a tornado coming towards me. And they're never frightening dreams. They're always really exciting. <laughs> Am I weird? <laughs> really exciting. Anyway, um, I'm going to head over to the, uh, across the pond here. I'm going to put some apples out and uh, get the, uh, the card of the trail cam. We'll see what we got. I'll say it again, I'm planning on hunting right off my deck this winter, this fall, this late fall, or from right inside the cabin. I, there's no reason I have to sit here. If I'm just looking at the one spot, I can sit inside the cabin and watch too. Won't that be comfy with my coffee and a comfy chair? Binoculars set up so I can just have the iPad there, playing a movie or something? <laughs> oh boy. Hey, there's a bumblebee. Oh, is that a bumblebee? What are you doing there, fella? 
<laughs> said, did you see that fucking storm yesterday? I don't know if you'll be able to see him. I gotta hide all the... There we go. What kind of bee is that? You okay, fella? I don't know if you can see him very well. Yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck there. Should take him out and stuff him in the vegetables. <laughs> Make sure they pollinate. Anyway, okay, we're gonna head across the pond. Let's go. is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Have I said how nice it is just kayaking around the pond like this? It's so peaceful. Except for the horses galloping around the pond. What I like to do is, can you see here a little bit? I like to kind of cut this way and across. That way they don't, they're don't they not quite sure which way to go around because I don't want them to go all the way around. But then, once I'm done with the, uh, the mineral block, then I'll cut kind of this way across to that rock over there and then Willow and Jumba can join me over there and we'll come back along the shoreline. stop at the duck raft the goose raft uh, been watching the lights lately they've been coming on looking really good can't see anything there but uh, they look nice at night Trace of apple are gone. how long it takes them to get over here. Jumbug might not come. Willow, Jumbug! There they go. I don't know if you can see them. See, Willow 
coming. Come on, girls. Junebug, Willow. Don't see Junebug coming. I know Willow's coming. Junebug, Willow, there she is. Had a girl. Look at her go. You made it. Good job. Who's a good girl? Junebug. I saw you, little girl. Where are you? Junebug. There she is. Oh, what a good doggies. You made it. A little bit of exercise for you. Come on. Good doggies. Good girl. You good doggies. Yeah. to swim out here in this pond this is where I do it right here where there's no weeds indicates it's it's kind of deepish too deep for weeds I'd come right off that rock there dive right in there and I'd swim across to somewhere over here if I found a good spot to come out maybe over here where there's no weeds right where that rock is remember I caught that fish that one time actually it was over there but that's where I do it Kayaking on the pond, man. It's one of the most fun things to do at Raspberry Rock. No guff. Let's go see what we got on the trail cam, eh? Something good.
Anyway, I'm heading into town, which is funny. I was halfway there yesterday. Uh, <coughs> but it's my uh, usual Tuesday thing. This shade of blue uh, really attracts the deer flies, so I'm trying to figure out a way to get this in here and uh, not block my view. Um, too much. Maybe I'll try some zip ties and... But a little bit of movement is good because uh, they like movement. Well, I mean, the ATV is going to be moving anyway. But... Yeah, that's about it. All right, let's go, Russell. So I'm in town doing my stub thing. I was at Home Hardware and they had a, there was a new girl on cash, tiny little girl, young. She had the biggest fake eyelashes I've ever seen, like up close and personal. <laughs> and she was blinking way more than usual. And I was gonna say something like, how do you keep your eyes open? But I've discovered that uh, the older I get, the less funny and clever I am. <laughs> I just come across as creepy. I know this, so I keep my mouth shut. Peter McKinnon put out a video recently. If you don't know P who Peter McKinnon, McKinnon is, he's kind of Canada's version of Casey Neistat. If you don't know who Casey Neistat is, oh, look at him up. <laughs> anyway, Peter McKinnon, great filmmaker, really talented guy. Uh, he was doing some filming in public. <laughs> and the poor guy, he was so self-conscious. He's like, there's people around. I'm <laughs> talking to the camera. So self-conscious about it. I'm like, He's, he's a fantastic filmmaker, and he films all the time in public, but he's still s incredibly self-conscious. Uh, and I do, t I am too, but I somehow get over it. Not that I'm in public right now, but there was also this bit. Which was taken on the side of a very busy road. <laughs> and there's cars zoom, 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 like constantly while I was doing that. And, there's people watching me from the shop behind me, over my shoulder. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you just go for it and you get some great video out of it. Anyway, I'm gonna go back. I got all my groceries and stuff. I've had my stuff. It was good. I, uh... Oh, here's the sign that you've been watching too many YouTube videos. I, uh, I was eating my sub in, in the park uh, by like Lake Stoko. Eat my sub there and out of the corner of my eyes I see a couple of seagulls in an altercation and I look over and in my head I'm looking for the controls to rewind or go back 10 seconds so I can watch it again so I can replay it and I'm like oh wait this is reality clear sign that you've been watching too many YouTube videos <laughs> all right I'm out of here Oh, we're back here. I contacted this company called Mr. Cool because they make mini split, uh, mini split AC units. Uh, and to their credit, they said, Yeah, sure, we'll send you one. Um, it, it's what you like sending product alone is one thing, I mean, it's their cost, but shipping this thing must have been something else. It came on a pallet, 244 pounds and all. This is the inside unit uh, that's upside down but that goes in on the inside and then my groceries and then there's the outside unit <laughs> and some more stuff as i said it all came on a pallet um and uh some fine subscribers pointed out to me that i needed uh, a different kind of power I, i'm gonna look up exactly what it is but it, i have single 120 volt single phase and it's something like 230 split phase. I'm going to look it up exactly what it is. And uh, and I thought, okay, we can make it work. And then I started to think, maybe we can't make it work. And I was going to tell them not to ship it. But they'd already sent it. 
And I should have told the wizard to uh, reject the delivery when it came, because it would have just been sent right back. You know, no, no additional cost, but I didn't. I kept thinking we can make this work. Uh, so it came, and and I, I, I still couldn't find a solution. Ray uh, couldn't come up with anything. So I thought, I'm going to ship it back at my own cost, of course. Um, uh, but having troubles doing that because it's cross-border and uh, complicated. So anyway, I'm taking her to the cabin. <laughs> Long story short. Uh, we're going to make it work somehow. I don't know how. Um, this is ridiculous. Uh, putting something on the front of the bike like that. Because I won't be able to see shit over that. That's ridiculous. But it's the only way I'm going to get it all in one trip. That is somehow going to go in here. <laughs> Put this cardboard here to protect it from the, the things. Uh, somehow we got to get it up there because that's the heaviest piece. Uh, you guys can watch me do this. It's going to be funny, probably. <sighs> I'm actually filming right now because I'm taking a break. <laughs> I got it that far. I'm like, oh. If I film, then I don't have to keep doing it. All right, but I got to do it. Okay, there we go. Meanwhile, somebody out there in... Uh, somebody out there... Tell me how... I'm going to look it up in the manual to see exactly what it requires. But in the meanwhile, somebody out there is going to help me figure out how I do this. I can either replace my inverter with something that puts out the right kind of power I need. Or there's going to be something else that converts it. Buck booster? I don't know. I don't want theories. I need real information, guys. Because we've thrown around a lot of theories. <laughs> <clears throat> Fragile. Well, we're about to find out how fragile. <laughs> uh, I got the beer. This is like almost the right shade of blue, <laughs> so that should really help. Oh, this is terrible. Well, this is terrible. Well, Mr. Cool, we'll see how well we do. Isn't it interesting how there's no deer flies right here right now? They're drawn to movement. When I brought the car in, they were all over the car and stuff. But you hang around one spot for long enough and they just kind of buzz off. Literally. Bzz. been having problems with this next bit so I'm just gonna get ready
course, right? When you're ready, then you don't have any trouble. Although to be fair, I did, uh, I did kind of sneak to the one side there. I avoided the 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 little divot, whatever. The tracks in the middle. The divots. Are they divots? What the hell are they? Just love walking in all this mud. Off grid life. Yeah. Because we're off grid and loving it. Okay. Good angle, Russell. Can you see what's going on? place to put the cold food. Never had these. Hail Caesar Korean barbecue. It's a Caesar Korean barbecue flavor. Actually, pretty good. It really does taste like Korean barbecue. It's got to weigh at least 20 pounds. Another reason why it sucks to get old. Uh, am I starting to list <laughs> all the reasons why it sucks to get old? Are there any good things about getting old? Not many. Can I just keep on holding this? This is the unit go that goes outside. I wonder if I could just leave it out here. Yeah, I think it can get wet. Oh, I'm taking it. In. Oh, I see at least 12 ripe strawberries on there. They're still coming in. 
I'm gonna wait for City Girl to get here. She can have them. I said she wasn't gonna be here for uh, this week's live stream, but she is. She's coming back a little bit early. Yay! Why do they put handles on it? It's not like you can lift it. <laughs> Senior citizen discounts. That's what I'm thinking. That's only good thing about me getting old. All right. Look at that. Look at that strawberry. They don't grow very big, but they're nice. Oh, that was so sweet. Hmm. Wow. That was nice. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. I say don't carry stuff by the straps. Well, screw that. <laughs> it works so much better when you do. I think it's the law of casters. Oh, what happened to you, guy? Are you dying? Yeah, City Girl can figure that out. I think it's the law of casters that if their wheels are pointed in one direction, that's it. You can come to infinity and back, and they'll never come back to a, uh, they'll never turn. At least not in the way you're going. Casters, the wheels and the bottoms of dollies, right? Just, they swivel. Unless you're, you've got load on them. <laughs> anyway.
Gosh. City Girl's back. Hi. We're so happy to see her. So, as promised, uh, we went to uh, Bass Pro in Vaughan, which is just north of Toronto, a couple of weeks ago now, I guess. Mm -hmm. I just love it there. There's so much to see from all the like fake stuffed animals to the fish tank. The fish tank. I was going to say the rattling can across our <laughs> day. The huge aquarium, uh, which is awesome. That's probably my favorite part because it's got all the local fish from around this area. Um, just so much fun to just browse around and look at everything. And awesome. City Girl found the ATV that was just the right size for her. <laughs> okay, I think it's a kid size ATV. It may have been a kid's ATV. Um, but it's my size. But it was, I mean, you know, she's not very big. <laughs> uh -huh. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I, what did we buy? I bought a little and then oh sunglasses I bought sunglasses there they're actually reasonably priced so that was pretty good anyway we're coming down to the end of this video and we're gonna sing <laughs> I'm wait. shaking my head because you'll be blown away by this by this we're gonna sing a duet for you guys <laughs> uh, it'll be awesome mm -hmm. okay ready ready how much is that doggy in the window arf, arf. I do hope that doggy's for sale arf, arf. how much is that doggy in the window arf. I do hope that doggies for sale. Arf, arf. Oh, there's three arfs at the end. What? Arf, arf, arf. No, you didn't say that. Peace <laughs>